Dana White Contender Series 2024 Week 8. Welcome to Winning in the Shadows. I am Andy from Winning in the Shadows and wagertalk.com. Let's get right into it. Uh, I will tell you guys, forgive me, I got in late last night uh, from Portugal. Unfortunately, my luggage did not. So if I'm wearing the same shirt in every video this week, that's why. Uh, <laughs> no worries, though. Uh, let's break down this main card. Uh, some pretty good betting opportunities, um, in my opinion here. So uh, we'll start with uh, Christian Savoie against Jacoby Smith. Jacoby Smith is the huge favorite here. I got to tell you, I think this fight is a lot closer than these odds are suggesting. Jacoby Smith, highly touted prospect, really, really fun fighter, big time power on the feet. Um, he can wrestle big time as well, um, get takedowns. He can hold opponents down for like the entire round. Uh, he's got really good ground and pound. He doesn't go for submissions. And his style is, it's really just a maul and overpower opponents. And it is absolutely work so far. I just don't think Zwa is going to be that big of a pushover here. Um, Zwa's last fight here. I was This this last fight um, Zwa was in, this thing was a war, man. Like it was an awesome fight. Like if you got enough, if you haven't watched it and you got enough time, go back and watch this fight. It was really, really fun. So, um, it, and here, here's the thing. When I, when I see a guy like that, that is that battle tested, I just don't think he's going to be overwhelmed, uh, by someone like Jacoby Smith. Um, Savas got pretty good takedown defense. I've seen him stuff quite a few takedowns. I like his leg kicks. And if he can get those leg kicks working on Smith early, and if he can stuff a couple takedowns, I think it's really going to change um, how Smith is really normally able to just overwhelm his opponent here. So I, I actually think Swaw can do some damage to Smith that Smith really hasn't um, been tested with yet. Um, I think taking overs in this fight is actually the way I want to play. I'm certainly not going to lay minus 800 on Jacoby Smith, even though I think he does kind of squeak out of a, a close win. Uh, I just, I'm not, I'm not putting Smith in a parlay at minus 800. And I think most people are going to see a Jacoby Smith like, Oh, let's, let's like take the under. I'm going the other way. I like overs in this thing. We've seen these contender series fights and a lot of UFC fights where if it doesn't get finished in the first round, it's really hard. Um, to, to finish these guys. So I, I, I think this is going to be a sneaky fight. That's going to be really close. I could see it going to decision where Smith kind of closes out a close or uh, uh, wins a close decision. Um, Cause I do think at some point he's going to get a takedown and eat up some clock and do some nice ground pound. I just don't think Swaz is going to be that big of a, of a, of a push over here. Um, I think this is a really good test for Jacoby Smith. I think he could come out smelling like roses if he puts on a really good performance against a, a guy that I think is a little underrated. So um, my pick here for the video for winner is Jacoby Smith. I'm not betting that though. I, I definitely would be looking at overs uh, in this fight. That's going to be uh, how I would play that one. All right. Up next, we've got uh, Abdullah Arami and Torres Finney. And I got to tell you guys, I'm just kind of done with Torres Finney. I I'm done with the Torres Finney experience. Um, it was fun. It was nice while it lasted. We cashed two bets on him. Um, but I, I just, uh, his his last fight was so unimpressive. It was so disappointing because the bar is set so high for him. You see, you see how high his ceiling is, but it's just like, what was that? It was awful. So, you know, he gets, he fights an absolute chump on contender series. Dana White tells him to go get some more fights. He takes one fight. I know that they were talking about putting him in the house with the ultimate fighter. So, okay, that's why he only had one fight before they brought him back. But he fights another kind of bum and puts on a pretty bad performance here. And he just, he's due to get beat here. Like, he's, he's not, it's not like he's getting a lot better. Um, at least, at least I didn't think he got better from one contender series to the other. His gas tank is a big problem. Um, he just relies on this you know, brute strength, but he's just not that polished skill wise. Um, you know, his striking still isn't that impressive and, you know, wrestling of course is going to be elite. Um, there's just not a lot you can find on Abdullah or Rami. I've, I've, I've seen some, I've seen some video of it, but you certainly can't like go back and watch like every single one of his, um, you know, one of his fights. Uh, I do like, he was at least on PFL Europe. It gets a really nice, uh, win where he was kind of losing at first, Gets a nice little comeback win. 
I, I'm just I, I'm not playing Finney. I'm just I'm just not doing it. The guy has got too many holes in this game. This is just kind of a weird. It's a it, you gotta admit it's a weird thing what's going on with Finney. Like they're they're, they're 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 just sign him if you want if you want him in UFC. Just sign him. Why are we getting multiple fights in one season? So I'm out on Taurus Finney. I have no plays in this one. If anyone else wants to put him in parlays, by all means, God bless you. But I am not going to be uh, that guy. Uh, I'm just not going to be playing uh, uh, Torres Finney and anything. So this fight is going to be a pass for me. Uh, up next, we've got David Martinez and Xavier Franklin. I really do like David Martinez uh, on this card and just, you know, overall in general. Uh, 10 and 1 fighting the undefeated Xavier Franklin. And. David Martinez, his last two wins, uh, well, his last, okay, he's got a lot of finishes, but what I like about his last two wins is that they were in round four. He, like, really set up his opponent, wore the opponent down, showed great cardio, and then gets finishes in in round four. I thought it was pretty impressive. Um, he's got good volume of strikes. His pace just doesn't stop. Um, and this is only three rounds, so I know that Martinez's cardio is going to be great. I think Xavier Franklin, is, his cardio is going to be fine. He went the distance in a, in a five-round fight, I believe. So I think both guys, this could be a really good, like, three-round fight. Like, sometimes we see these contender series fights where it's three rounds, but the last, you know, half of the fight kind of sucks. I think if this goes the distance, which I do like it to go the distance, uh, I think this is going to be a really, really fun fight for all three rounds. Um, Franklin does have the ability to wrestle. Maybe that's an advantage. It's just not going to get you a contract as we as we as we've seen on on contender series. So I think Martinez and the the volume that he's going to put out there is going to be a little bit too much uh, for Franklin. I think this potentially could be mostly on the feet with maybe a couple of exchanges on the ground if Franklin tries to go that way. Um, but I think both guys are really durable. I think Martinez is not going to be able to get like the big KO uh, like he's done in previous opponents, but I also don't see Franklin. Uh, he's, he's not going to submit Martinez and he's, I don't see a knockout coming as Martinez is very durable. I think this fight goes the distance. That would be my play in this one. I, I, I think if it gets out of the first round, I think both guys are going to kind of lose a little bit of that KO power on each other because they're both pretty elite. They've got good movement. Um, so I, I, if you're going to pick a winner, like, like Martinez, I think Martinez by decision could be good. If you like Franklin, you could play Franklin by decision, but, uh, I think the odds are good enough. Just take this fight to go the distance. I think this is a, it's a pretty confident play. I like, I don't see a finish. If there is finish, it may be in round like three maybe, but I don't see an early finish in that one. So, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take a sprinkle on Martinez and Franklin, uh, to go the distance. Uh, before we get to our next fight, just want to remind everybody, if you're watching this on Tuesday, which is when we recorded this, uh, it's $5 Tuesday over at Wager Talk. We've got our $5 college football best bet. If you guys haven't followed our college football plays, here's what we do. We do one play a week. That's it. And it's always a team total. We started this last year, 17 and five lifetime. We are four and one this season. So the college football hammer time plays of the week have been absolutely dynamite. And today it's only $5. Just go to wagertalk.com. Uh, you can click on Andy Lang's profile page or shortcut wt.buzz slash AL. College football start going back to last season. We first started this has just been a gold mine. So very, very low volume. Only one play per week, and you can get it today for $5. That is probably going to be one of the best things that we have uh, going this week. Absolutely love the number that we got. Love the team that we got, and uh, feeling pretty good that we can push this to 5-1 and one for the season. So don't miss out. Don't wait till tomorrow. <laughs> It'll go back up to the normal price. So it's $5 Tuesday at Wager Talk, and you get the college football best bet. All right. Uh, up next, Alberto Montez and Carlos Calderon. Uh, let me put time code here real quick um all right so montez he's got wicked submissions like this this guy's submissions man they they come out of nowhere and they're brutal like these, these last two these last two two uh wins were really really impressive uh he just he it, it he kind of lets himself or he he gets he lets the opponent come forward so it looks like the opponent's like pushing forward with the pressure and, and that is the optics but it's it's like Montez almost counters with submissions. Like he'll he'll counter with some strikes, but 
once a guy keeps pushing forward, Montez loves jumping in and trying to grab the neck. Um, he's really he's really fun to watch. Uh, I, I worry about his takedown defense. It's not very good. And his wrestling is honestly pretty bad, in my opinion. So it's almost like he kind of wants to get taken down so he can get it down to the ground to work those submissions. But it doesn't look great. I think his movement on the feet is pretty good. Striking is, it's okay. Uh, it's not... It's not lighting the world on fire, but uh, it, it's it's those flash submissions that that is really really good. I just worry about the holes in his game as a minus three hundred favorite. So there's no way I'm betting on Montez. Um, Calderon has good takedowns, and I think his wrestling is pretty good. I think that's a I think it's going to be the biggest like area where one fighter has an advantage in this one is Calderon's going to have the wrestling takedown. And unless Montez has been working on him nonstop, I think Calderon can get him on the ground um, pretty easy. Um, if it, when it does get to the ground, cause I do expect the ground, I think it's going to be really fun. You got two guys that are going to be searching for submissions. I think we could have some really good scraps and exchanges, but they may cancel each other out. And this could be a fight that takes place on the ground and on the feet. And if it's on the feet, um, I kind of like Montez uh, with, with some of his counters and with his jabs because I'm just not really sold on Calderon's uh, striking. He's done some really good damage uh, to guys, but he's just not he's not really a you know boxer you know kind of style. So uh, I I did love about Calderon. So he lost two fights uh, in a row a couple a couple of fights ago. He he came back. I, I I thought his last two fights were were really impressive. Uh, really really good submissions. Um, he just I don't know. He looked he looked. I, I maybe those two losses were really good for him because he you know he's undefeated even in amateur and pros loses a couple. We talk about how sometimes getting that that humbling really really steps up your game. I just I liked his body language in his last couple fights. I liked his confidence. I thought this was I thought this was um potentially like a really good thing for him to lose two in a row because his last two wins, albeit not against great competition, but that's kind of what we get here on contender series. Um, I think if you're looking for underdogs here on contender series, I think this is, I don't think you're going to get much better than plus two forty five on Calderon. Who's going to have takedowns and wrestling uh, in his arsenal. And you got Montez who he's not a one trick pony, but he does depend on that submission. If he doesn't get it, this goes to the, this goes to decision. I think you could be looking at Calderon standing there getting his hand raised. So I think Cal Calderon has a, a couple of paths to victory. That's why I like him in this one, mostly because of the price. Like if this was if Montez was only minus one fifty, and Calderon was like plus one twenty, I might be going, eh, you know, pass on this one. But plus two forty five, that's too big of a price to to pass up here um, on uh, on on uh, Calderon, who's got some advantages and some paths to victory. So. Uh, if you guys have not hit the like button, please do that. It really, really helps the algorithm out. And if you could leave a comment in the comment section, word of the day is going to be wash. Word of the day is going to be wash. That's in honor of me having to wash my three pieces of clothing that I have left because the rest of my clothes are in Europe. Um, <laughs> so if you don't have a hot take to leave in the comment section, just just type the word wash down there. It really helps me out. Let's everyone know that uh, we're doing a good job and it helps the YouTube algorithm Appreciate you guys all uh, very much, and it is good to uh, be back from break. Uh, last fight here, Dr. Nergerzai against Barto Seswick. Uh, I think this is just going to be a brawl. <laughs> uh, it's it's going to be on the feet for the most part. I think both guys like to throw big strikes. I don't think we're going to see a lot of volume <laughs> in this one. I think both guys are just going to not do a whole lot to set up strikes. They're just going to be like really, really throwing big ones here. A uh, big thing for me is uh, Seswick is going to be taller, have the reach advantage. I think that's a real problem uh, for Nurgazai. Nurgazai is going to have to get inside that long jab, and he's going to have to do it early because I don't trust this man's cardio. Uh, I really don't. He's 9-0. and uh, Great. This, this decision win, man, I, he was exhausted. Uh, and he did damage early, but he couldn't get the finish. He had several times that he could get the, uh, that he could have gotten the finish. The ref didn't stop it. He got tired and there were some times where his opponent had won some exchanges like later on. I, I don't, I don't trust, I don't trust him at all. Uh, if this gets out of round one, especially if round one's kind of scrappy and, uh, you know, there's, there's kind of a lot of action in there. 
Um, the other thing is uh, Nurkic, he can wrestle. Uh, he can get, get opponents on the ground. But with this size difference, if he tries to shoot and wrestle and he does not get it to the ground, that's going to zap his cardio even more. I, I, I just I think Nurkic is going to have to work way too hard to get his offense going. Um, that being said, Sheswick, very low volume. Uh, his strikes are are pretty accurate, but he just doesn't throw enough of them for for my liking. He does have one shot, uh, you know, knockout power. His his body kick, his body kick knockout in the last fight was was really really impressive. Like right at the very end. So we we do know that he has knockout power in rounds three and two, and I just don't think uh, Nurkazai does. So um, I think in a close fight, I'm going to lean with the. The slight dog, uh, Sezwick, I think his jab is going to be pretty frustrating. Uh, I think the cardio advantage is going to go to him, and I think this probably goes the distance. So Sheswick, if you want to get a little bit cute, you could go Sheswick uh, by decision because I think if it gets out of the first round, you got Sheswick with low volume. you got Nurgazai with not great cardio. I'm not sure where the finish comes from. If anybody's finishing, I actually think it's going to be Sheswick late uh, if Nurgazai gets uh, – gets tired here. So uh, that's going to be my pick uh, for this one. So quick little recap here. Um, and I will tell you guys what I'm betting with my own money here uh, as well. Don't think that I'm betting every single one of those fights. So uh, Jacoby Smith and well, I like this one to, uh, to go the distance. This is probably a, a pretty small play with my own bankroll. Uh, so I would look at that one. Uh, Abdullah El Rami and Torres Finney. I'm just passing altogether. David Martinez and Xavier Franklin. I haven't played it yet, but I th there's a pretty good chance that by the by the time Contender Series rolls around, I will have a little play on Martinez, probably have a play uh, on the over as well. Montez and Calderon, I'm not playing this one uh, with, with my own money. I'm passing. But if you're looking for underdogs, I think Calderon's a pretty good uh, play for tonight. And then tonight, I have not played this one yet. I'm probably not going to play the main event. I may just wait and see what happens in the... Earlier fights, uh, if we get a couple uh, small winners, I'll sit this one out. Um, but if the night's going really well and I, might, I, I feel confident in the reads, I may end up sprinkling uh, Seswick at, at the plus money. I just think his, I think his reach and his cardio is going to be a little bit uh, too good of an advantage to pass up. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for it. Thanks so much for joining us. Good luck on your place. We'll see everyone later.